rational expressions. We're going to simplify them, we're going to multiply them, we're going to divide them, do a whole bunch of fun stuff with these things. A rational expression, as you know, is simply a fraction when you have a variable in the denominator. All right, so here's an example. x plus 4 over x minus 2. That's a rational expression, okay? I've got a fraction, and I have a variable in the denominator. Now, lots of times we're asked to simplify these. By simplify, when you simplify a fraction, remember, you're looking to see if you can divide something. For example, if I were just to simplify this fraction, you would look to see what divides into both of them. Well, I think that most of you would say, oh, I could divide a 2 out of both of those. And if I wanted to, I could just factor 6 as 2 times 3, factor 8 as 2 times 4, and then say, hey, I can divide out those 2's. This actually simplifies to equal 3 fourths. Right? That's how we simplify these. We have to look for their factors before I can see if anything divides. Well, I'm looking at x plus 4. I don't think I can factor that anymore x minus 2. I don't think I can factor that anymore. I'm done. That is fully simplified as is. Now I know some of you are so tempted, you want to like cross out those x's and cross out those 2's, but you can't do that for a couple of reasons. One is, when you're dividing, that's really what you're doing when you're crossing things out, you're dividing, you can only divide to undo multiplication. Look, those were multiplied together, so division does undo multiplication. Division does not undo addition or subtraction. I cannot divide. The other way to think about this is, I have two terms up in the numerator. I have two terms in the denominator. You can't do dividing when you've got two terms like that, unless they're identical. Okay? So, let's look at this. Let's say I have 3x plus 12 over x squared minus uh, 16. And let's say I want to simplify that. Okay? So, how am I going to go about doing this? Well, let's see. I have two terms in the numerator. I have two terms in the denominator. They're not identical. So, I'm going to have to factor. So, let's look at the numerator. Can I factor that numerator? I certainly can. I can factor that using a GCF, the greatest common factor. So, what is common to both of those terms? A 3. So, I'm going to divide out a 3, and I'm left with a x plus a 4. I have just factored the numerator. Now, let's factor the denominator. Ah, that's one of our friends. We call that the difference of perfect squares. Sometimes you guys call that dots. That's factorable, right? Because that is a perfect square. x times x equals x squared. That's a perfect square. 4 times 4 equals 16. And as we've discovered, we know that factors like so. x minus 4, x plus 4. I factored the numerator, I factored the denominator. Now, I have a blob of things multiplied on the top. Believe it or not, that's one term. 3 times x plus 4. I have a blob of things multiplied in the denominator. I have one term in the denominator. Since everything's multiplied, I am now allowed to divide. So let's divide. What can I divide out of the numerator and the denominator? Yeah, the x plus 4 divides by the x plus 4. And you're left with 3 over x minus 4. Fully simplified. Factoring is the name of the game, people. You have to factor. Factor, factor, factor. Okay? Let's try some multiplying, shall we? All right. Multiplying is essentially the same process, but just with a little more going on. All right. Let's just make something up here. Uh, 2x minus 10 divided by 5x squared 
times, um, let's say, x squared minus 25, and x squared uh, plus 5x. All right, I have a fraction times a fraction. Remember the way you multiply fractions? It's the numerator times the numerator, the denominator times the denominator. But before I want to do that, I want to see if I can do some simplifying up to down. And of course, what do we have to do first in order to do any dividing? We have to factor everything we can possibly factor. Okay? So let's take a look. 2x minus 10. Oh. I certainly can do a greatest common factor. I can do a greatest common factor of 2. So let's divide out a 2. I'm left with an x minus 5. All right, 5x squared. I guess I could factor that as 5 times x times x. But I can certainly keep that as 5x squared, whatever you like. Let's look up here. Can I factor this? Okay, there are two terms. Ooh, there's a plus, so it can't be difference of perfect squares. Oh, I think that's a GCF also. They both have an x. So let's factor out an x. It's like undoing distribution, right? So I'm left with an x plus 5. All right, let's look to this denominator. That is looking like the difference of perfect squares. And we know how that works. So that is going to be x times x equals x squared. 5 times 5 equals 25. There's a plus and a minus. I have everything factored. Now remember what I said. You don't have to do this part, but I want you to think it. When I'm multiplying fractions, I'm multiplying the numerators and the numerators and the denominators times the denominators. That whole thing is one term in the numerator. It's just a blob of things multiplied. Same thing in the denominator. That's one term, a blob of things multiplied. So I'm just going to divide. This is the fun part. Let's see. x minus 5 divides with an x minus 5 to equal 1. Ooh, x plus 5 divided by x plus 5 is 1. Do you guys see anything else? I'm seeing this x. That x is free to divide with one of those x's. Right? So instead of x squared, I now have an x. So now let's see what I have left. I have a 2 in the numerator times 1. Well, that's just 2. I've got a 5 times an x. Oh, that was very satisfying. So I simplified this by multiplying them. But before I actually did my multiplication, I factored and I divided, or you say cancel, right? You divided out everything you could, and you're left with what you're left with. All right, let's try a division problem. Division is just like multiplication, except there's that one extra thing that you have to start with. Okay? We kind of talked, we did talk about this in class and why it makes sense. But remember, to divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Okay, we talked about why that makes sense in class. I hope you remember that. So let's just do one, okay? So here we go. Let's say we have x squared minus 3x minus 4, okay, over, let's say, x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 16 over 5x. Alright, so here we go. We're dividing. To divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So reciprocal, I'm going to flip those guys, okay? But you guys are good at double tasking, so I'm going to flip and factor at the same time. Is that all right? So let's just factor things as I go. Here's a trinomial. 
right? So I'm going to factor this. If you're having trouble factoring the trinomials, watch my video on factoring trinomials. So we know this is the opposite of double distribution, right? Some of you guys have been calling this unfoiling. So you want to imagine this as two binomials multiplied together. So let's see, x squared is going to be x times x. I look for factors of negative 4. What times what is negative 4? 4 and 1, I think, will work nicely here. It has to be 1 negative and 1 positive to give me a negative 4. And I want the outers and the inners to combine to give me a negative 3x. So I'm going to make the 4 negative and the 1 positive. x plus 1, well, that's just kind of hanging out. There's nothing much to do with that right now. So let's just rewrite that. Okay, now I'm flipping this guy, finding the reciprocal. So this 5x is going up into the numerator. That guy is going to be in the denominator. Hey, isn't that difference of perfect squares? Yeah, so that's going to be x minus 4 times x plus 4. So that's a perfect square. That's a perfect square. That's the difference. Now I just do my fun dividing. My fun, you guys call that canceling. I don't really like that word, but I'll use it. That's a blob of things multiplied on the top, a blob of things multiplied on the bottom, and now you just start dividing. That divides to equal 1. That divides to equal 1. And I'm done. So let's see. I have left in the numerator just a 5 times an x. In the denominator, I have an x plus 4. Can I keep going? Can I just divide out those x's? No, I cannot. You are right. I'm done. Again, I have two terms down there. So I can't do any dividing. Right? I can't undo addition with division. So there you have it. I hope that helps.